Hey Steve here and welcome back to my Processing Subscriber Images video series. This one is going to be a little bit of an experiment and it's going to be something a little bit different to the 30 or so that have come before it. And I'm going to ask if you can put in the comments uh, which type you prefer. So what I'm going to do for this walkthrough is actually go through an image that I've already processed and I'm just going to talk you through each of the layers and each of the adjustments that I've added. So let me know in the comments which type you prefer. Just say long or short and uh, yeah then that will help me figure out whether this is something I'll continue. Now the image that we're going to be working on in this video is uh, from Nicole Richstein or Rick Stein. Yeah the first thing that I will just mention uh, I guess to you personally Nicole is uh, I'm not quite sure exactly how or why but most of the image seems in focus, but then around the outside edges here, um, where I'm just moving the mouse, the uh, the image sort of seems to lose focus. I'm not exactly sure why that is. Maybe you, the, the tripod moved, or maybe there was you had a filter that was maybe a bit smudged or something like that. Either way, um, yeah, it's a beautiful image. And you're right, there are lots of nice pinks and purples in the image in the sky already. I haven't done anything to the image so far, apart from opening it into Photoshop from Lightroom. But what I think is going to make this image really stand out is accentuating the uh, the main pile of rocks in the middle here uh, by making those lighter and then gradually darkening the rest of the image. So yeah, I think what the image really suffers from um, is just a lack of focal point. So obviously you've got the focal point of the, the rocks here in the center, which is great but there's a lot of other stuff going on and the tonal range isn't that um isn't that wide so you know what we really need to do is get these rocks to stand out against the background of this uh, very busy stony rubbly surface in front and the sky to a lesser degree um because it is a bit brighter um so yeah i'll just walk through the steps and let's go so the first thing that i did to uh, to this image was add a curves adjustment which just simply darkened the image. So we've darkened, you know, dragging the curve down. And then I've added a mask to isolate this change to the sky only. So uh, for this particular sky, the um, you know, all that you need to do really is just darken it and you start to see these colors come through really nice. Let me just have a quick look at the mask here. So I've used the luminosity mask to isolate this adjustment to the sky mostly. Still got some greys in here, so it is being adjust, uh, is being added a little bit to the foreground, but mostly this is a sky darkening layer. So that's the first step. Second was this levels adjustment, which just kind of did the same thing, but in a in a slightly different way. And I also used the luminosity mask to isolate this only to the lightest part of the sky here. So if we look at the mask, just these edges of the sky that are already a bit dark. We've managed to isolate the uh, the darkening so that it excludes those already dark areas. Um, so this curves adjustment is next and that has brightened the image and we've applied that just using a regular brush um, actually through a luminosity selection so um, I've brushed through a shadow selection into the foreground here to uh, to basically apply this lightening effect to mainly to the foreground, not to these uh, bottom corners here. So something actually um, that I want, did also want to mention is this big rock here in the foreground in the on the right hand side. It's got a lot of visual weight to it, so it's you know it's very uh, very much like drawing our eye, and so in bringing the attention to the center by lightening everything around the middle and darkening the edges, we can kind of go some ways towards eliminating that visual weight that's kind of dragging us down into that bottom corner of the frame. So here we've um, seen the first step towards doing that by lightening the middle and not lightening the bottom here. So that's the, uh, that's the curves adjustment. Next, I just did a really quick and rough um, levels adjustment here to uh, to brighten these rocks. I didn't do a super accurate job there, it's just literally using a brush. If I was going to be spending a bit more time on this I would have used the luminosity mask to isolate that and make it like a really neat layer mask. Next 
was uh, another lightening layer. So levels adjustment. There we just tweaked the uh, the highlights in the midpoint there in that levels adjustment, and then brushed it just into the foreground, but again not into the bottom corners here. Uh, next is a little bit of contrast. So let's have a look at the effect that's had. And this time, whereas in the previous couple of adjustments we've been lightening the middle, this time we went the other way, adding contrast to the top, so basically the sky, and then the, at the bottom of the foreground here. So that's the effect of that adjustment. Next is uh, a darkening adjustment, just using a curve again, where again, in order to kind of make this really pop, this, this bundle of rocks in the middle, really need to isolate it and make it um, stand out like brightness wise um, against the, not only the background, but the foreground as well. So all I've done here is darken and then and then brush that effect in using a layer mask. So black layer mask, white brush, and brushing it into the foreground around the rocks here to just darken everything that's surrounding that big bundle there in the middle. Uh, next, this was just a kind of a preparation layer that I wanted to add before adding an autumn effect. So here I've just lifted the shadows. So I've added a curve and then I've just moved the black point here up from, what is that, from zero to nine. So let me just show you what that does. It kind of uh, washes out the shadows a little bit. But the reason I wanted to do that was so that when I added the autumn effect, which is gonna add a lot more contrast, it just, it just applies it in a different way. Um, so the shadows don't go too uber contrasty immediately. So I have still reduced the opacity of this autumn effect layer. Uh, and if you're not sure how to create an autumn effect, you can either use my luminosity masking panel or I'll put a link to a video where I show how to do that. Um, yeah, manually without the panel. Uh, but I've also added a luminosity mask here just to isolate this, well, to, to eliminate it from the deepest, darkest shadows as well. So without the mask, there was still a bit extra um, a bit too much contrast in those darkest shadows. So a luminosity mask there to isolate that. And then the final thing that I did was just add another merged copied layer on top to do some dodging and burning in and around these, um, these rocks in the middle. So I've just taken the dodge tool and just dodged some of the lighter edges and the burn tool to to burn and darken some of the darker edges. And that just adds to the sort of three dimensionality of the object. So if we go before and after, we'll see the effect of that. And just, you know, something like that is gonna help make it pop a little bit more. So let me just zoom out a bit and there we go. That is the, uh, the finished image that I kind of came up with. Uh, let's just have a quick look at what this all looks like together. So let me just put that in a group. Uh, and I'll turn it off and on. So here's the original raw file. And here you can see we've basically flipped the tonal, uh, not the tonal range, I'm not quite sure how to say this, but you know, the, the middle here, uh, this, these rocks in the middle were dark. Um, the sky was a bit too light. The foreground was light. Uh, this rock was taking our attention and pulling us down into this bottom corner of the frame without anything else there to kind of take us back into the image. Uh, and the finished version flips that around so that by, you know, this being the brightest um, object in the scene, that's where our eye immediately goes. And we're kind of able to then start exploring the image from that central uh, focal point. So, yeah, I hope you found this video useful. Like I said at the start, if you want to let me know if you prefer this real quick retrospective uh, walkthrough where I just kind of show you the layers that I've added after I've added them, um, then let me know. Or if you prefer me to go every step of the way, every adjustment showing you exactly what I'm doing, then also let me know just so that I can get a rough idea of what you prefer. Or if you want a mix, then 
I'm happy with that as well. So uh, yeah, I'm here for you guys. Just let me know what you want and I shall provide it for you. So with that said, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.